we have learned a lot about the brain in the last 50 years, a lot. And we've learned very little about the brain from PET scans and MRI scans and like that complicated technology that's used to study human beings and an unbelievable amount by studying animals. And you might think rats in particular. And you might think, well, you know, rats, why? They're not much like human beings, you know, but, but that's wrong. Um, um, you share, I don't know what it is, 98.5% of your genetic structure with rats. Some of you probably more than that. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, we, we haven't devolved from the common ancestor with rats from an evolutionary perspective that long ago. I mean, like it's millions of years ago, you know, but it's, it's short compared to how long ago we devolved, let's say, from or we... We, we, yeah, devolved, I think that's good enough, from amphibians. And so we're a lot like rats, man, and we have the same skeletal structure, and our brains are quite similar, and the neurochemistry is very, very, very similar. I mean, the neurochemistry is similar right down to the level of crustaceans, which is why I wrote about lobsters in Rule 1, because, our, because I thought it was so bloody amazing when I came across that literature to see that... Um, when lobsters are defeated in a social contest and they lose their hierarchical position, that they undergo neurochemical changes that are analogous to the neurochemical changes that human beings undergo. That's so amazing. And that the same damn drugs that help us, antidepressants essentially, also cheer up defeated lobsters. I mean, it's such a, it's a staggering demonstration of the continuity of biology across, you know, span, unbelievable spans of time. You know, critics have complained that I cherry-picked the data, but they don't know what the hell they're talking about. So, they don't, they don't. I studied the serotonin system for a very, very long time, and I know perfectly well that one of the things that it does is monitor your position in a social hierarchy. And, 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 and it's more important than that, because the serotonin system is a, it's a master control neurochemical system. It's like the conductor of an orchestra. Everything in your brain depends on the serotonin system, which is why you think about it, like an antidepressant um, decreases the rate at which neurons will reuptake serotonin. You, you need serotonin to modulate the way your neurons work. You take an antidepressant and the serotonin works a little longer. Okay, so what's the consequence of that? Well, let's say you're depressed. Okay, we've got to think about being depressed for a minute. So, when, when you're depressed, this is what happens. All you remember about the past is what's negative. So, everything about the past is negative. All you can see in the present is what's negative. Everything about the present is negative. And nothing about the future is positive at all. And so, so that's interesting, eh? Because it means that something has shifted inside you let's say neurophysiologically, that changes the way you view everything. Everything. Your entire past, the present, and the entire future. And what it essentially does is exaggerate negative emotion to a tremendous degree, that's depression, and suppress positive emotion. Now, there can be variance in that. So sometimes you see depressed people and they come you can think about your own mood in this way, you know. You, you might say, well, I'm not that sad, but I've just sort of lost my interest in everything. Okay, so that means that what's happened is your positive emotion system has been suppressed. Because the positive emotion system is what gives you that interest in things, that pulls you forward to action. Okay? And the negative emotion system, that's anxiety, that's a huge part of it. Frustration, disappointment, grief, pain, that kind of covers it. Anger as well. Though anger is a bit complicated because it's half a positive emotion and half a negative emotion, which is why it feels so good to get angry, by the way, um, and why it also impels you to action, whereas most negative emotions stop you. you know? So, so in, in any case, um, if, you're, if your serotonin system, if your serotonin function declines, then all of a sudden everything is negative. You think, well, isn't that interesting? How the hell can it be that something can change within you that changes everything? And the answer has to be, well, it must be a fundamental system that's been changed, right? Because it, it, if it changes everything, it has to be a system on which all other systems depend. 
And that is the case with the serotonin system. And that's really worth knowing, especially when you also know that the serotonin system counts where you are in the social hierarchy. And so there's this weird kind of one-to-one -one correspondence. Imagine a social hierarchy has ten levels. I don't care what hierarchy you're in. Most people's hierarchies are actually quite small. They sort of consist of the people that they compare themselves to. You know, which is a strange thing too, because one of the things that you see happening with really successful people is they actually don't get a lot more, a lot happier and a lot less unhappy as they climb the, the, the broad social ladder because the people they compare themselves to change. And so I can tell you a funny story about this. So I know this guy, I worked with him for a long time. His name is Adeo Ressi. And he's a hell of a guy. He's like six foot seven and he's like really charismatic and, and he's been pretty successful. He built this company in, in San Francisco called Founder Institute and it's only one of many things he's done. And um, it's operating in 165 cities. It's a school to teach people how to be entrepreneurs. He's trying to export Silicon Valley um, what would you call it, know-how, technological and, and financial, to the rest of the world. And in like five years, he built 165 schools, not, not physical schools, but school-like organizations around the world. And like, go, go try that. Like, that's really hard, you know? Just to build one is hard, but to do that in multiple languages all over the world, it's bloody well impossible. And then at the same time, he built his organization, started... 2,500 successful companies as a consequence of, of building this school. It's, it's pretty good, you know, and, and, and he was having a rough time and was talking to me on the phone um, about, about, you know, he wasn't so happy about what he'd done with his life, and he said, geez, I compare myself with I, my roommate, and, you know, I've hardly done anything, and <laughs> his roommate was Elon Musk. <laughs> it's like, I just laughed at him. I thought, geez... Really? That's what you're going to... You haven't done anything compared to Elon Musk, and you're depressed about it. It's like, yeah, well, you and the rest of the planet. I mean, look, what, what, did, Musk, Musk, what did he do? He, he invented an electric car. That's impossible. And then he made it work. That's impossible. And then he built an entire infrastructure to charge it, and, and, and that worked, and that's impossible. And then... And then they're good cars, and, and then he made them faster than any cars have ever been, and cheap, and so that's impossible. And then that wasn't good enough, so then he decided that he would compete with NASA, which is impossible, and build rockets at one-tenth the price they were building them, except bigger, and then, then he would shoot his car on his rocket out into space. <laughs> right. And he did all that. And, and it's like Adeo was thinking, oh, I've hardly done anything with my life. It's like, oh. So, but my point is, is that, you know, you, 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 primates of our type sort of have an, a group size that we think about as our group of about 200 people. So, like, on Facebook, for example, the probability that you're in something approximating reasonable, constant communication with more than 200 people is low. You just don't have the time and you can't keep track of it. So, so our natural group is something like 200 and our groups tend to fragment when they get bigger than that. And so, and that's also associated by, by the way with cortical size. You see this in primates is that as primates get, develop larger brains, this, the group size that they seem to be able to manage also increases and that might be part of the reason why they develop larger brains. Who knows? But anyways, it's about 200 people. And the problem is, is that as you get more successful, say, in, in the global hierarchy of uh, 100 million people, the 200 people that you compare yourself changes. And so that you end up with $100 million and you're not very happy because your $50 million yacht is like 20 feet shorter than your friend's, you know, 150 million dollar yacht and so and you're high in neuroticism so that makes you frustrated and disappointed you know so anyways anyways it's important it's important to understand it's a, the, the the message here the point of this is that you have a system the serotonin system base of your neurophysiology it also sets your brain up during embryonic development so it's it really is it really is the master control system in many many ways and it counts where you are in your hierarchy. And then it decides 
how much positive emotion and how much negative emotion you should feel on average because of your position. And so like if you're, let's say number one is at the top and number ten is at the bottom, so you're number ten, you're barely clinging to the bottom of reality, your brain says, look, it's dangerous where you are at the bottom of the hierarchy, you don't have a lot of friends, it's, uh, it's precarious down there. And so that means any little thing that goes wrong, any little error you make, that might be the end of you. And so you better be on guard and alert. And if something small happens, it, it better hurt because it might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. And there's nothing pleasant about that. Like, of course, why would there be? Why would there be anything pleasant about a, uh, a process that magnifies everything negative you feel about anything that might be wrong? And, and not, just on, not just on one small dimension of negative emotion, not just anxiety, which is bad enough, but anxiety and the pain-related emotions. So, pain-related emotions are pain, obviously. It generally indicates damage to a psychophysiological system, but grief is a pain-like emotion, and frustration is a pain-like emotion, and so is disappointment, and loneliness as well. Those are all pain-like emotions, and, and have, have elaborated out of an underlying pain system. And the, so the negative emotion system is like a tree that has branches, and each of the branches is the separate negative emotion, you know, but they're all tied together at the root. And positive emotions are like that as well, except they're not quite as differentiated. And so, if your serotonin levels fall because you've suffered a hierarchical defeat, then the positive emotion system gets flattened so that good things no longer feel good because it's dangerous to take risks, perhaps if you're at the bottom of the hierarchy and you're not doing very well, which is why you're at the bottom. Why should you have any trust in yourself and you don't have any friends and you're not well situated in, in, in the social world? You're not going to be enthusiastically moving forward to do new things and so your motivation for for, for, for engaging in life declines, and it can decline pretty much to zero. You know, if you, if you see people who are seriously depressed, they say, oh, well, I can't even listen to music anymore. It just sounds flat and dead. You know, and you, you know if, if you talk to someone who says that about music, they're, they're pretty damn depressed because music is one of those things that virtually everybody always enjoys, you know, at least one genre or another. And, 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 you know, the, a depressed person will describe even that the sensory quality has changed. And so, and then they also say they're absolutely overwhelmed with negative emotion. And so, okay, so that's a good thing. So that's, that's a good, very interesting thing to know is that your, the manner in which one of your fundamental neurochemical systems is tracking your position in a hierarchy is crucial to the maintenance of your emotional stability.